Okay, so this is part 11, and it's the last part of working with strings. So there's one more thing we want to talk about, and they're called escape characters. So an escape character is essentially a character which, quote, invokes an alternative interpretation on subsequent characters in a character sequence. So one is going to be the case where we have an apostrophe in a string that's wrapped by single quotes, and the second is going to be something called a new line symbol, uh, which is going to alter the behavior of the string when it's printed out. So here's both of those, and we're just going to demonstrate them without any like serious commentary. And the reason is, is that they're not really, there's not a lot to these besides just they exist and you can use them. So here's what we mean. Um, you might say like, why don't I just put double quotes around this? And honestly, that's a pretty good idea. There's really no reason why you couldn't just put double quotes here. But let's assume that there is a reason why we can't put double quotes there for some reason. In that case, what we could do is uh, put an escape character, which is to say we put a backslash and then the character that we want to escape. So there's a bunch of these. They're already built into JavaScript. You can look them up. We're going to go over these two. But let's look at what happens if we don't escape the apostrophe. It actually assumes that we're ending the string here, and the rest of this is going to throw an error. But if we put that escape character, which is to say this character is now escaped because of this backslash. I'm sorry. Backslash. Yeah. It's wherever the top of the slash is pointing. Uh, so this backslash apostrophe escapes the apostrophe, meaning that it's not going to end the string. It's going to assume that we want this string uh, to contain an actual apostrophe there. So if we run this, we're going to see sample, and then it's raining. And all of a sudden, this is taking a little bit longer than it does. Cool, cool, cool. And then a new line symbol. New line symbol is the same idea, except this one is going to be a little bit different. So let's uh, let's... Roll that out there like that. So we have multi-line string, and we have first line, and then this is our escape character, and then second string, and then we have another escape character, and then third line. So what this escape character actually does is it it, it tells the the uh, let's say like the console that is logging this line that when you hit this backslash n, I want you to move to the next line and continue printing the rest of the string out. And as you've seen in this case, we've done it twice. So if we run this, we'll see that we get first line second line and third line on different lines. And if we wanted to format this even further, we could put a new line symbol here, which will allow us to um, move basically everything, starting with first line and second line and third line, to their own individual lines. So if we see that, um, I am not exactly sure why that's indenting first line. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, I know why that is. It's because when you put a two strings inside of a console.log and separate them by a comma, it automatically puts a space in between them. So essentially, this is the same thing as putting all of this together, but with a space in between here and here. So that's what's going on there. Let's talk about some variables that we could do this with. So in the first one, we say that is Jubal's mother's favorite, isn't it? We've got three versions of that escaping the apostrophe. And then a haiku is an old silent pond. A frog jumps into the pond. Splash. Silence again. Now, the websites that I got these haikus from had some differing opinions on what the sequence of syllables is. But I, I get the impression it's supposed to be an old silent pond. So it's 575, five, um, which makes a haiku. So when we log this to the console, um, let's... Let's just go ahead and put plus because that'll make this look uh, nice and fancy. So if we run these, the first one's going to allow us to have inter not interpolated, but it's going to have us um, count the single quotation as an apostrophe rather than the end of a string. And there's three versions of that. And then a haiku from Matsuo, Matsuo Basho, who according to a website was a famous haiku person. An old silent pond, a frog jumps into the pond, splash, silence again. Um, so just in case you're curious what we did, this was shown in the, in previously in this video, but if we put a comma there, it's going to think we want a space. And so this part is going to be indented just a little bit. Again, not a big deal, but just something to keep in mind. If you get a situation where you want things when logged to the console, put on new lines, or you want to have single quotes wrapping a string. And there's a couple other ones. We can do uh, backslash T for a tab. Um, I'm not going to try to rattle off any more most because I don't know any off the top of my head, but if you look up escape characters, you can find a nice robust list. Our last challenge. Drum roll, please. We're going to complete a function that takes in three string parameters, 
excuse me, the first, second, and third lines of a haiku. Then returns a string that when logged to the console outputs the haiku in traditional format. See example above. So just those new line symbols in between the first and second and the second and third lines. Your function should create a haiku variable and assign it to an expression which will create one printable onto three lines string out of the three input strings and return the haiku variable. Below are examples of the code running, assuming that you will have completed the described function, generate haiku. A little bit fancier than what we've been doing so far because most of these are going to be rather esoteric, meaning they're not really applied to anything in the real world. We give some examples that are, but for the most part, we're just learning the mechanics of the language. Uh, eventually, once we have all of this down, we'll start combining them using conditionals and loops and then talk about functions in general. But for now, we're just kind of hammering out the... Um, I had a math teacher that always said the meat and potatoes, but I suppose that's kind of a, a dated reference. Um, let's say the nuts and bolts of, of the, um, you know, the language. So there's our stubbed function. Let's go ahead and grab our test cases. And let's also uh, put plus here, here instead of the comma so that it'll be nice and, and properly formatted when we output it. So create a haiku variable haiku, excuse me, and assign it to a variable involving the input lines such that they format correctly when the return value is logged to the console, which is a complicated way of saying just, just do the new line symbol thing. So we'll say first line plus, and we're not going to put a space in here. And the last thing to keep in mind is that the new line symbol is part of the string, so we can't just say this we have to make sure that it's inside of a string. Uh, so we say second line plus our new line symbol. And we can put it in double quotes. It, it's not going to make a difference. You, you can mix and match strings like that. And then third line with a semicolon at the end. And then we're going to return our haiku variable. So if we run this, we should get our nice little haikus. In the twilight rain, these brilliant hood. In the twilight rain, these brilliant Hued hibiscus, a lovely sun sunset, uh, should also log formatted haiku. In the twilight rain, these brilliant, what? Ah, result haiku one. So we have an error in the test case, um, which I will remove by the time you see this. But let's print it out just because haikus are lovely. The lamp once out moves west, flowers, shadows creep eastward. Lovely. Anyway, let's go ahead and copy our now completed function bring it back to the input window. We're going to paste it, uh, run the tests, and then find out the last kind of shape that we're in, which is going to be helpful silhouette. Man, that's weak. Anyway, um, probably try to get like a different version of these for the next time. But that's it for this, uh, this lesson and for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.